Hi, I'm Andy Howard, an Applications Engineer with Keysight ESOF EDA. I'm going to show how to improve power amplifier efficiency and linearity using envelope tracking. Envelope tracking is a means of improving power amplifier efficiency. This shows the instantaneous PAE of a power amplifier with and without envelope tracking applied. The gray histogram shows the distribution of the output power of the modulated signal. The plot indicates that relatively high PAE can be achieved even with a high peak to average power ratio signal. This AM to AM distortion plot shows that envelope tracking can also improve a power amplifier's linearity. In this video, I will go over envelope tracking basics, show how to generate a shaping table, and show envelope tracking simulations and results. At the end, I'll show you a link where you can download an ADS example workspace that shows these and additional envelope tracking simulations. There's quite a bit to designing an envelope tracking system. I will be showing good preliminary simulations to run if you have a bias-dependent, nonlinear model of your power amplifier to see what level of performance can be achieved potentially. Okay, let's get started. This is a plot of the PAE versus power delivered of a power amplifier with a fixed drain bias. The PAE is reasonable as long as the input signal is high enough to keep the amplifier operating near its peak efficiency. Looking at operation in the time domain, this plot shows the constant drain bias voltage and the envelope of an input modulation signal. With a constant drain bias and a high peak to average power ratio input signal, you have to keep the average input signal power low enough so that at its peaks it does not drive the amplifier too far into compression. This means that, in this case, the amplifier is operating well below its optimal efficiency. With envelope tracking, the basic idea is that you adjust the bias voltage as the envelope of the modulated input signal varies so you keep the amplifier operating near its maximum efficiency. This shows that with a high peak to average input signal, much of the time the amplifier is operating well below its optimal efficiency. What happens to the PAE versus output power curves as you vary the drain bias? This plot shows these curves as the drain bias voltage is stepped. If the input power is low, use a lower bias voltage and operate along the top line instead of along the PAE curve with a fixed drain bias. I'm going to show several ways of simulating envelope tracking. These assume that you have a nonlinear model of your power amplifier. This could be measured bias dependent X parameters, a schematic that uses nonlinear FET or BJT models, or some other behavioral model. This is a simple block diagram that illustrates an envelope tracking simulation setup. Note that the block diagram for a real envelope tracking system would be more complicated and would include baseband I and Q generation, an up converter, and an envelope tracking power supply. Here we supply a modulated input signal to the input of a power amplifier. We detect the input signal power at each time instant and pass this through a shaping function to determine the corresponding bias voltage so the amplifier operates at high efficiency. The shaping table allows you to operate the amplifier at constant gain, constant gain compression, or always near the maximum efficiency point as the input power varies. Now I'll cover simulations for generating shaping tables. As you vary the amplifier's bias, its gain also varies. You will want to investigate this gain variation so you can shape the drain bias in response to the input signal envelope. You may want to maintain constant gain, constant gain compression, or try to keep the amplifier always operating at peak efficiency. The first step is to simulate the gain of the amplifier as a function of both the input power and drain bias. This ADS schematic has the simulation set up. The data display allows you to select a particular gain you want to maintain. You enter the desired gain you want. For this amplifier, something between 10 and 12 dB would be good and this automatically creates a shaping table that shows the bias voltage versus available source power. Note that better envelope tracking performance may be obtained if the shaping table has finer resolution than is shown here. You can achieve this by using a smaller step size in the bias voltage sweep. This shows how a shaping table to maintain constant gain is derived. Say you want to maintain a constant gain of 11 dB. When the available source power is 7 dBm, the output power needs to be 7 plus 11 equals 18 dBm. 
drawing a line up from the 18 dBm output power point until it crosses one of the gain versus output power lines at 11 dB, we see that the drain bias needs to be set to approximately 2.5 volts. You can obtain a new shaping table immediately just by changing the desired gain value. Here it is set to 10. Now, if the source power is 7 dBm, the output power needs to be 7 plus 10 equals 17 dBm. Drawing a line up from the 17 dBm output power point until it crosses one of the gain versus output power lines at 10 dB, we see that the drain bias needs to be set to approximately 2.1 volts. Note that with a desired gain of 10 dB, the amplifier is operating further into compression and the efficiency is higher. Note that if the available source power is below 2 dBm in this case, we hold the drain bias constant at 1.5 volts. So we are effectively turning off envelope tracking for low input power signals, which causes the gain to rise for these low input powers. You don't want to allow the drain bias to drop too low, which will stress the power amplifier, but you have to decide how low to allow it to go. You can write out the shaping table data into a file for subsequent simulations by just activating an equation. An alternative shaping table that keeps the power amplifier operating at a constant level of gain compression can be obtained from the same simulation. Once you have a shaping table, you are ready to run an envelope tracking simulation. Here is a schematic for carrying this out. This is the signal source and the power amplifier. The components inside the blue lines are behavioral and they detect the instantaneous input signal power and then read the corresponding bias voltage from the shaping table file. In a real envelope tracking system, these components would be replaced by an envelope tracking power supply. The source in this case reads data from a separate simulation. You can use various types of modulated signals or even baseband I and Q data versus time. You will want to examine the statistics of your signal before using it in an envelope tracking simulation for the first time. This data display compares results of a power amplifier simulated with envelope tracking applied and with constant bias applied. With envelope tracking applied, you can look at relatively simple results like PAE, AM to AM distortion, AM to PM distortion, EVM, and other characteristics. Also, you can use the Keysight Vector Signal Analyzer software to look at detailed specifications as shown. In this video, I've shown how to set up and run envelope tracking simulations and interpret the results. There are many other simulation setups for envelope tracking, including simulations of non-idealities such as a time delay between the RF and bias modulation inputs and limiting the bandwidth and slew rate of the bias modulation signal. These are in the example workspace and PDF document that explains it that you may download by clicking the link in the text description associated with this video or by directly using the URL link shown. Thank you for watching.